This video was brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Get top quality razors delivered to your door starting at just $1 a month. Link below in the description. Skip it up and that up. What's going on folks, Rich of Review Tech USA. I just want to mention something real quick. If you see in the top left corner, you'll notice you'll see the frames per second for Crisis 3. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm actually like kind of benchmarking. I got a R9 290X uh, video card by S XFX, if I could talk today, um, in my AMD rig. Uh, for everyone who wants to know the specs, it's AMD FX 8350, 16 gigs of 1866 megahertz RAM, uh, gigabyte motherboard, I don't know the motherboard, but those are the specs that people will most likely be interested in. And I got to say real quick before we start getting into uh, Gamergate, I have all the, the um, settings for Crisis 3 maxed out, uh, minus uh, anti-aliasing I have on X FXAA. So, and the game runs, there was like two scenarios where the game for like five seconds ran at like 28 frames per second, but Crisis 3 is pretty demanding, and this card gets me anywhere from 40 frames to 80 frames per second, and this is, you know, an 8350 processor is good, but not great, so... I'm really impressed with this card, with this game at least. So just want to let you know why the frames per second is in the top left corner. But anyway, I am joined again with Mundane Matt. Uh, he has an awesome channel. I'll have a link to it in the comment section below. And I'm pr getting pretty familiar with Gamergate, but he's done a lot of research on it. And he has a ton to talk about. It was actually because yeah, I mentioned something on Facebook. I, this is where you That's where you saw it, Matt, right? When I mentioned it on Facebook. I, I saw it on Twitter. Okay, okay. Matt messaged me on Skype and said, hey, Rich, I've been kind of really following it, and I could give you, you know, my two cents on it. And I said, hell yeah, man, let's do a Skype chat. I'll record it, and you guys could hear a lot about Gamergate. And right now, I'm going to shut up and let Matt talk. I do know a good amount about it. He probably knows more than I do, so let Matt talk, and we'll hear what's going on with Gamergate. He could explain what it is, too, as well. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the last time we spoke, a lot's happened in a couple weeks. Um, originally, we were talking about the, the Phil Fish hack and how that was kind of in relation to Zoe Quinn, which went back to the original blog post and, and the DMCA against my channel and everything. Uh, but then, like about a day or two after we talked, uh, it started getting more popular. And that's when uh, Adam Baldwin from Firefly and Chuck and The Last Ship decided to chime in on Twitter and say, start getting involved. And he coined the term Gamergate. And Gamergate started being basically passed around and he was using it as a way to kind of like poke a bit of fun at Zoe Quinn and other people that were involved in, in her camp uh, and really just like not caring what they were saying. He was taking them to task constantly over this stuff. And from there, a lot of people started using that uh, as well as the, the fire rises hashtag, which was mostly being used because everyone kept making fan edits of the Dark Knight Rises with like Bane being 4chan and I, I, I pop up in a couple of them and an aristocrats in a couple of them, Total Biscuit, I mean, those kind of things. And we started seeing like this movement of people just kind of gathering and talking about it using the hashtag Gamergate. And then all of a sudden, like shit went down. And by that, I mean like all these people on the other side of the coin started talking about the identity of gamers is dead. Gamers are dead, they're dying, they're done, right? Like a bunch of whiny, crying man children are trying to hold on to the old school ways where women and minorities were not allowed in video games whatsoever and, and they're kicking and screaming because it, their time is up. And it's like all of this excess shit. And then there's like Devin Farasi from Badass Digest started tweeting out that we were literally worse than ISIS. Then he later on went that. to say, I heard that. motherfucker, I was pissed at that because um, they had just beheaded a journalist like that day, you know, and it's like, wow, really? People who are opposing this particular viewpoint are worse than people who executed a journalist on TV. And then another one a week later, you know. Yeah, um, that was that was awful. That, that comparison it, was ridiculous. It was it was it was ridiculous. And no one called him on it. No, none of his peers 
called him on it. None of his peers who are the, like, I mean, and I mean this too, like the liberal uh, Hollywood agenda, those people, man, they're, they're his friends. And I'm, I'm a, I'm a left leaning progressive personally. And I worked in Hollywood and everything. And so it's like, you've got like Ryan Johnson, the writer, director of Looper and soon to be Star Wars episode seven and, or sorry, eight and nine was like, talking about this kind of stuff. Uh, there was the documentary, the Sarkeesian effect. That was kind of what brought a lot of this about was uh, Jordan Owen is writing the thing. I think I mentioned it last time. Um, and all this stuff was happening. And like people like Joss Whedon jumped in on it. And, and that's what brought in uh, Adam Baldwin, I think mostly because Joss Whedon was like, oh, well, this woman is correct. And then Baldwin is the exact polar opposite politically of Joss Whedon. And that might've been what brought him into the fray. But uh, yeah, all of these people are just getting involved in making this conversation grow. And as it began to grow, we started seeing, like I said, those articles coming out talking about the death of the identity. Um, there were like, you know, uh, all this, like all this harassment was happening and it's just been going on for like two weeks. And it's, it, it's to a point now where we're now talking about it's no longer about like Zoe Quinn. It's no longer, it has not been about her since like right after we talked. It, it's now moved on to like, you know, still the ethics of games journalism on these websites, what it is that, that they represent. Uh, and the fact that like, you know, Polygon and Kotaku came out and they issued changes. Polygon has said like people can still donate to Patreon, but they have to disclose it. Whereas uh, uh, Kotaku has said, no, they cannot. Just today, the escapist came out and said that uh, they can they can they can uh, donate to Patreon, but they have to disclose it if they're going to write an, an editorial about it. And they can still donate to Kickstarter, but they cannot write about it if they donate to a Kickstarter or a crowdfunder. Uh, whereas Rock Paper Shotgun was kind of just like, oh hey, listen guys, we're 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 gamers too. We're gamers too. We love you guys. You know, I mean, most of you guys are assholes, but you know, like. We love you because we're one of you. So they're, they're backpedaling at like massive speed right now because the movement's been working and because people have been wanting to, to, to see reform and it's growing in numbers and you can't, you can't silence it. Well, the whole fraternizing, you know, was bullshit. You have developers living with, you know, game journalists. You have all this other crap going on behind the scenes, which was definitely swaying people's opinions, whether there was sexual gratification or not. You know, if if I'm friends with somebody and they want, hey, we're friends, review my product. Of course, there's a very good chance it could color my review. And people are pissed off at that, you know. Now, do I agree with all of the like death threats and all that other crap? No, I, I think that stuff is extreme. Whether it actually happened or not, that's a whole different story, too. Yeah. But I understand why people are pissed because it, it's almost like it, it's a big party behind the scenes with the supposed true professional journalists that work for websites who actually get paid salaries to do this. So I see why. And, and the only thing I could say is I think some of the articles, because I think a lot of people were quoting some, the, the article I talked about with Kotaku, the guy who wrote the article, his name is totally slipping my mind right now. But, uh, Luke Plunkett? Yes, Luke Plunkett. Now, in defense of his article, he said, if you're a gamer and a cool person, just be a gamer and a cool person. Uh, and I think some people misquote. That was, there was other articles where people were just being dicks and saying gamers are all assholes. But that was the one article I think that I didn't like that I think some, I saw some people quoting because he was like, hey, if you're a gamer and a cool person, be a gamer and a cool person. I don't care. I'm not talking about you, you know. But yeah, but the thing is, though, but because the, the two become synonymous, right? Like the term gamer, they're trying to say that the identity of the community is dying, but they're not like they're going, oh, gamer is dead. But what we really mean are like 14 to maybe 30 year old white straight men who play games that aren't being catered to them specifically any longer. They're upset. And it's like, well, you can't take a broad term like that and then shrink, you know, and then really just like. Uh, uh, make it about something that's that's totally not the broad term, right? Like isolate parts of it. 
Um, yeah, because yeah, that doesn't represent everybody. Like, okay, I'm 33, so I guess I'm out of that bracket. But I'm saying I don't give a shit that they aren't catering to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And yeah, there were a lot of articles coming out that they were trying to make it like, you know, you have, you know, a bunch of 30 year old virgins that are pissed off. And I think that's what people were annoyed at. And there's a video. I don't know if you saw it where um, uh, I let me see if I have it right here. It was up on Cinema Blend. Um, I am not your shield. I don't know if you saw that. Did you oh, see that? Oh, yeah, not your shield and not your shield hashtag. Yeah, those are, I've seen a lot of those videos and uh, I've talked to a lot of those people. And, what, and did they, uh, what did they say to you about that? That not your shield thing was really interesting to me. So the way not your shield works is it's all these people that are tired of being spoken for, right? And it kind of goes back to uh, some of the weaponized hashtags that we've seen on Twitter in the last few months, uh, mostly involving like social justice warriors and feminism. Um, like it was what the woman who did the cancel Colbert hashtag from April, I'm sorry, from March had another one called not your Asian sidekick, which was all about like people trying to co-opt Asians into their, into their click um, by speaking for them. And that was one of the things too, where these, these journalists are saying, oh, well, all of you are just sexist, misogynistic terrorists. You know, um, you hate women, you hate minorities, you hate everybody. And then all these people are like, oh, wait, hold on a minute, fucker. Like, <laughs> hold on. And then they're like, no, we're not your shield. You can't speak for us. We're not like you. And then what it was is they're going out and these, these people on the other side of not your shield and Gamergate are saying, oh, well, you're obviously all sock puppet accounts. You, you obviously are not legitimate human beings. You know, um, I, they're, they're trying to portray them as not being uh, real. And that's when the movement has gained enough steam as it has, because these are people like, no, fuck you. We're real. We're as human as you. We're not three fifths a person, you know, like we're none of that shit. You can't talk to us like that. And they're, they're pushing back. And that has helped legitimize Gamergate, in my opinion, because yes. these people are speaking up um, uh, and, and kind of standing with the gamer identity, if you will. Because it, it is. And I've said this before, and I will say it again. I would love to find the piece of paper, the, the doctrine uh, that says that gamers hate women and hate, hate minorities. I would love to find that. I'd like to wipe my ass with it if I found it, but I'd love to find it first. You know what I mean? Like, it's not written anywhere. This is something that they're telling us that we are. And it's, that's why there's a pushback, because it's not true. Well, they also want to make that the public stigma to people outside of the gaming community. So people kind of look at gamers. I, I kind of hate the word gamer, but I made a video about that a while. But they want people, <laughs> uh, people outside the industry to look at gamers as basically 14 to 30 year old white males who are, you know, ignorant and, and sheltered. And when I saw these videos and he was, you know, they had like women who were like, okay, I'm a, I'm a, you know, 18 year old white lesbian and I'm not your shield. And then you had a guy who was like, hey, I'm a black homosexual and I'm not your shield. I'm a black guy who's a gamer. I'm not your shield. And you had all these different people coming out. I was like, that's awesome, man, because it's totally undermining everything they're trying to say what a gamer is. And I, and I like I just said to you, I know what they're doing. They're trying to make people who don't game outside the gaming community look into the gaming community, be like, oh, they're a bunch of ignorant idiots who are, you know, 30 year old virgins, you know, and I love these videos because they're totally undermining that and making the mainstream gaming media look like idiots. Because they are. They, they are, are absolutely idiots. And it's like I. I read a lot of these articles and there's a couple, there's a couple main offenders in my opinion. You've got like Lee Alexander for one, who's making the rounds, you know, she wrote the article, uh, the, she, she's one of the first ones that pu published the gamers are dead article. And then you've got the, uh, she wrote something again for time magazine or times opinion site. Uh, she's been on a few different podcasts here and there and she's making the rounds and she keeps, and I, I listened to her on this podcast called girls with hoodies. And I kind of get like I get what she was trying to say at first and about the whole thing of like maybe the identity is growing up, you know, there's not just straight white men anymore. And I'm like, OK, listen, I can understand where that mindset might come from. And I'm an open minded person and I'm willing to listen to people. And then she went right in into the attack and started basically decrying everything that she says that like we're all just misogynists, we're all just sexist. And I'm like, you keep using these words and you simply do not know what they mean anymore. 
And and that's part of the problem. And the thing that's pissing me off about this whole sexist bullshit is that it's like, if you it, it, now it's like the new thing. If you question anything, oh, that must mean you're sexist. Oh, that must mean you're a male chauvinist. It's like, no, I'm just questioning what the fuck is going on. Stop putting words down my throat or stop using that as like a blanket shield to shut me up quick. Because that's yeah. what I see going on a lot, too, is like if anyone questions anything and it regards a female and I'm not even talking about bedroom, I'm just talking in general. It could be like, you know, we're talking about a gaming topic and the girl doesn't agree with us. She could be like, oh, you're both sexist. It's like, where the hell is that coming from? What I don't care what the hell's between your legs. I just don't fucking agree with you. You know and what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's in part of of modern age feminism and the social justice side of things is like they want you know, they, they try to decry the term uh, special snowflake, but it, it, it almost exclusively applies to them. These are people that want to be identified for every little thing about them, whether it's unique or not. And they want it to, to be unique, even though it's, it's, it's not. And so they play up these aspects. Um, if you look at this particular event, too, the way that, that it's gone, the way Gamergate's gone, is it started off, like I said, with, with the Zoe post. And so for the first couple days, yeah, it was about her. And, and she's still been close to the center of it, but been in terms of the fringe elements of it. Like she's all people are talking about her, but she's not important to it anymore. It's like her flagging my video is still talked about, but it's not important anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's perfectly fine for both accounts because, uh, you know, I've been advocating for Gamergate now for three weeks. I mean, before it was Gamergate, I've been talking about this for three weeks. Yeah, you really have. Like, I know I really have, believe me. It's like, it's, it's, my phone is blowing up like constantly. I'm getting like ask FMSs constantly. I'm getting all these things constantly from people wanting to know more about it, wanting to, to be involved because they see that there's this outright attack on our identity. And they, they're, they're like, wait a minute. No, like I want to step in. People email me all the time. What do I do? How do I fight back? How do I stop this? And I, I just keep telling them, like, just keep talking about it. If you keep talking about it and not letting them shut you up, they're not going to win. There's no way they can win. What but, my, oh, go ahead. What my concern is, too, and I said this in one of my vi relatively new videos, is that if everyone always wants every goddamn game to be politically correct, I really feel like it's going to affect the creativity of the games. Like the whole thing, like I said, in one of my, another video I had with Assassin's Creed Unity, where people were flipping their shit about the fact there wasn't a female protagonist leading it. It's like, are you really like, are you kidding me? Like I said, you know, I understand there's more male lead characters, but that's like me flipping out because there's only a female lead in Tomb Raider. Like, there's a point I, I always agree with equal rights for everybody, but there's a point if you turn everything into politics, it's going to really start hindering the industry. If, if you're worried, oh, why is that guy black who's the lead character? Why is he white? Why is he, ma he male? Why is she female? And if everything's always under a microscope. I, it's going to really threaten the creativity of the gaming industry. I mean, it, I mean, we're already concerned about it now because everyone's trying to rehash everything. Then on top of it, you're going to try to make every game to be goddamn politically correct all the time. It's going to be it'd be a disaster. I mean, look how like defensive Ubisoft came became when you know people lashed out at them for not having a female lead character. It's like I almost feel like the devs feel because how political everything's becoming they always feel like they have to walk on eggs and that's very dangerous too um the other thing i'll say is i feel a lot of this feminism thing i makes i really f wonder if the people that are going down this whole feminism route are genuine or they're just going down it because it's a popular thing right now and they're looking to be recognized because of it and i gotta call anita sarkeesian out of that i i, I wonder because she disappears like forever and then she comes back, and, and, and it just seems like it's a shit show for the wrong reasons. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got a theory about that too. I'll let you. Uh, I'll, let you, you I'll let you say it. If I'll finish, and I'll let you. I'll finish, and I'll let you say it. And so I just feel sure. like it's more so for her agenda and for her to get a little e fame than it is her actually being concerned. Like I watched a good chunk of her newest video and she was really pulling at straws man trying to find some examples i was just like are you kidding me 
like i don't know i mean it, and she brought up some, like some history pieces and stuff too and other people have and i'm just like because that's what happened back then <laughs> men yeah. were men were sexist pigs at those times i don't know what to tell you it's it just but anyway what were you going to say about her Oh, well, my theory on Anita Sarkeesian and all this is um, it's it's I, I agree with you. I believe it was all about opportunity. The average time between her videos is anywhere between three to five months. Average time, usually on the uh, the further end of that spectrum. Uh, she likes to take her time with it. Why? Because her video series should have been done by now, all things considered. And uh, she knows that I once her videos are done, she's not going to be culturally relevant any longer. Um, another thing, too, is is this video from her last video, there was a two month, a two month delay instead of three to five months. So she upped her timetable. Well, that can only be explained because we were a couple days into the this particular event. And then there was also the Jordan Owen video, the documentary he wants to make called The Sarkeesian Effect that came out. And that's what got. Uh, a lot of attention at first and so then his video or his series came out and then three days later her video came out and then like the next day there was the big badass digest article talking about the two and that's what brought in joss whedon to the fray right and then a lot of other people came in and then all of a sudden she gets the the kevin dobson tweets that have been heavily scrutinized because it's like you know how how is it that she could be logged out of twitter and get you know, a screenshot 12 seconds later. It, there's, there's a lot of things there. I'm not going to say it didn't happen. I'm just merely saying there's, there's stuff there worth, worth, you know, questioning. And as soon as that happened, people started talking about her again. But let me just, uh, here's the thing. The first day her video came out of this new one, she had 37,000 views the first day. At the end of the second day, there was maybe 78, 79,000, somewhere in that neighborhood at the end of the second day. Then... The, the, the hate, the, the, the Dobson tweets came out, and then the next day, all of the sites ran articles talking about it. All of the sites. So then her video jumped from 70-some thousand views to like 300,000 views. That's right? awfully so, convenient, yeah. It sounds awfully convenient. Now, I'm not trying to, like, I, I, I'm at no point in time have I ever advocated, you know, harassment in any of the situations. No, I mean, neither have I. I might switch you with that. But it's like, the, the, the point is, is you've got like, you know, these people are, are saying these things and there's, you know, she says that she's contacted authorities and all these things. And same thing with Zoe Quinn. She's contacted authorities and all these things. But then they're outright posting these images to their Twitter feeds. They're posting them to their blog. They're posting their evidence that they have. But if you went to the police with any of this, they would tell you, do not share this information. Like, we want to catch these people in the act. If you know, or they know that we're looking for them, they're not going to do it. And so they're sabotaging whatever investigation might happen. And it's like, for what? To get that extra bit of, of sympathy on Twitter? Like, what the fuck? It doesn't, you know, it, it's distracting from everything that's going on. Because it's still about the ethics of journalism and the transparency from these people. And they're distracting from it. It's, and it's, then making it more about misogyny. It's all it's all about an, an agenda and it's about fame. Because from what I've read on Anita Sarkeesian, this is like all she does, isn't it? Feminist frequency and this whole thing. This is what is keeping her lights on from what I've read. Unless there's something I'm missing. Uh, she does a lot of speaking engagements, from my understanding. I saw she her on TED, yeah. She, yeah. Well, no, TEDx. Let's not let's not confuse that. Let's that's TEDx is community driven. I can be on TEDx. You can be on TEDx. Anyone can do TEDx. Okay, TEDx. So there's there's a thing there. Like yeah, it's like don't, <laughs> that's been a big one. Um, but the thing is, is you've got yeah these people that are pushing this fame agenda. Uh, and everything and and I get accused of it as well because I've been talking about this nonstop for a few weeks people have been asking me like oh you've you know you've jumped up so many you know YouTube subs and Twitter subs like obviously you're doing this is for fame and I'm like no I, I, I talk about this as a lot because I feel that it's important to keep the conversation alive and try to an extent to keep it focused so basically it's in her best financial interest to keep on fan fueling the fire like 
Yes, yeah, that's the thing that kind of concerns me is like it's this is all she does pretty much. She talks about feminist. So she it's like she has to find things to talk about to keep herself relevant and to keep herself paid. Let's be real. So that really it's, concerns there, yeah, me. Yeah, there's a lot of that as well. You know, she's got the she's now 501c3. Uh, so all the donations are at least 50 percent tax deductible uh, as well as sustained donations. You know, I mean, it's like she's doing so. Like the thing is, I, I've always been against her tactics, and and the the fact that she super cherry picks arguments. Um, and like you said before, her last video, she it it, didn't, it felt rushed. It felt very forced. So that's why it probably seemed like she was grasping at straws, because it, it was it was trying to come out during this controversy in order to to capitalize on the on 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 the anger on the rage, you know, to get people to talk about her again. And but that's the thing is though it's like that to me is a distraction from the overall GamerGate uh, tag and and not your shield and what it's about because this isn't about Zoe Quinn this isn't even about Andy Sarkeesian anymore it turned into an outright attack on the gamer identity from the people that are paid to represent us you know that are paid to give us the news and and these people it's like Internet Aristocrats said they they will they'll be journalists when they want integrity or they want to claim to have integrity but they're bloggers when they get called into question. You know, and yep, yep. and it feels like like the reason why we're seeing these sites kind of backpedaling and changing their their tactics, uh, changing their policies, even though no one has been fired yet, which is something a lot of people want, is is certain people to be fired uh, for how they've represented their company and how they've acted in Twitter and other places uh, during this thing. And you know, and my my thought on that is like, look, we we want to give people the opportunity to change. I think that would serve us better as a whole than outright trying to just destroy people's lives because that's their tag. You know, that's, that's what they try to do. They don't like someone. They will outright try to kill them and kill their career. You know, there's been the threats, the people that have had, that have been threats of losing their livelihood, losing their job, uh, losing their friends because they're, they're standing up and speaking out for what they feel. And, and I've, I'll tell you this, man, I've gotten, I have gotten emails from well, well-known people in, in gaming uh, that have asked to remain anonymous, which I hate, I hate not being able to divulge it because I'd love to be able to divulge it, um, but have told me flat out, like, this is like, you guys are on the right track. Keep doing this. Because for too long, these, these journalists uh, who all know each other, that all live in the same city together, that are all friends, kind of propagate this this mindset of us versus them and anyone who doesn't agree with them a hundred percent gets on the negative side of that and we've seen people like lee alexander outright threaten developers on twitter this is from months ago you know there's there's stuff floating around about that you know you've got you've got i did a video about lee alexander too where i looked at the fact that she co-runs a consultation company uh, company and she's still an active editor at large for Gama Sutra and writes articles for other uh, for other publications. While and then while using her Twitter to promote her activism, as well as promoting the games that she was hired to consult on through her personal Twitter, which is also tied to her work Twitter. And to me, that is a a conflict of interest. <laughs> That's an understatement. Yeah. Right. And, and so it's like, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, this is stuff that's going on. We've talked about this. We're showing this. And the only thing she can say is, oh, well, obviously they have their tinfoil hats on. And it's like, are you like, are you kidding oh, me? Oh, shut the fuck up. Like, you, there's, <laughs> you know, you know what it is? And I'll, 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 I'll we'll, we'll, we'll close it up with this is that people got caught with their pants down. And now people are in the industry, the journalists in the industry, quote unquote, they're they're ass hurt and they're, they're trying to do damage control. And the best they could come up with is just saying, oh, it's a bunch of white man children that, you know, live in their parents basement and don't have lives. And it's all blowing up in their face. And the thing is, too. And, and they cry and one. This is another beyond the fact that now with people like you and I on YouTube and other people uh, who are, are, you know, independent people who are doing this and talking about gaming news and reviews and stuff. The websites are dying because of this. Like, no, a lot less people are going to Kotaku. A lot less people are going to IGN. A lot less people are going to GameSpot and so on and so forth because 
and I think this is another reason why they are embittered because the industry changing. It's much different than it was even back in when you wanted to look up gaming news back in 2002. Where did you go? The only places you could go to is the mainstream websites. Those those golden days for them are done. And you know what? They're they're saying that they're the gamers pissed that they're dying. You know who else is pissed and that they're they're dying? The conventional gaming journalist because their days are numbered too, and they know it, man. Why do you think there's so many layoffs all going on all over the place? Because yeah. it's 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 changing, and I think that's the reason why too. Beyond the fact that they, they got caught with their cronyism and all that shit, they're not the only place to go to now to find out that information. And and I, I think they're kind of like you know they're they're doing their last gasps too before they drown. So it's a mess. I think there's a part of that as well. And you've also got the uh, a lot of these journalists have their own YouTube channels that focus on like let's plays and other things that they make money off of. Yep. Um, and then you've got like, they do that on the side, but they use their popularity from their job in order to funnel subscribers in there. And they all go on each other's podcasts. I mean, I can't really talk ill about that so much. You and I are talking right now and you exactly, know, you've, got, yeah. you've got like almost 10 times the amount of subscribers I do. Um, so there's things like that, but it's, I think that, yeah, cronyism is a thing. But when it comes down to it, like the, the I, I think the, th- the best thing we can do to move forward, like to, because people are afraid that with Destiny's release tomorrow, that it's going to, you know, kill uh, this movement. Like, you know, I know that Zoe Quinn tweeted out yesterday that she's, she's like, oh, I'm looking forward to Destiny coming out for more reasons than one. You know, it's not going to stop it. People have a genuine interest in this. I think what they... Just if any of your listeners are just coming into this and you and you get kind of riled up and you get angry about it, good. But but channel that man, channel that into raising awareness, bringing the discussion to them, but not in a way that's you know don't don't use a lot of swear words, don't be mean about it, be firm, be critical. But like that's the problem too is any time a person sends something to them that's not representative of the movement as a whole, that's what they latch onto and that's what they use as a way to discredit every other person involved. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why it's all going to shit. That's in my opinion, why it's all going to shit. Yeah. Is no, because people aren't, aren't driven to the same thing. Exactly. And no threats, no hacking, none of that shit, because that, that also, that, that takes, it takes it a huge step back. Just the awareness is working. It's the awareness that caused some of these websites to change their policies. It's the awareness that's causing this whole gamer gate thing to happen. And that's a good thing. So keep that moving forward. Just keep the negativity at, at bay because that could backfire hardcore. All right, folks, um, we'll end this at that. This is Rich of Review Tech USA. I was glad to have Monday and Matt on again. He he just he's awesome. Make sure you check out his channel in the description below. Um, as always, make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And thank you for enjoying my channel. Have a good one. The preceding video was brought to you by Big Cheese's YouTube channel. For gameplay reviews, gaming music, and vlogs, subscribe to Big Cheese VG. Link below in the description.